Greetings. Welcome to another in the series on Qigong. My name is Michael Gilman. This lesson covers a popular, in fact, this is probably the most popular form or one of the most popular forms of Qigong called the Five Animal Frolics. It's also one of the oldest sets. It was developed by a physician in China, a man named Hua To, yeah, somewhere around the first century uh, AD. So around 100 to 200 in there someplace AD. And um, has been practiced continuously throughout all of these thousands of years. And like all the rest of the Qigong sets that are popular, everybody sort of adds their own flavor into it. And as the as the people gain knowledge about the body and how things are, um, they change a little bit. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to introduce you to um, sort of the basic, simple exercises, basic, simple series. And then um, we will start to expand on them and kind of take them and play with them a little bit. All right. So these five animals, there's a lot of history about this and, and many people say that Tai Chi Chuan takes many of its movements and ideas from this set of Qigong exercises. Now Hua To, the developer of it, was a physician as I said, and he believed that exercise should contain lots of healing elements. A lot of this, um, this is going to be, uh, you'll feel like you've had a workout, but also this is very good for your internal organs, uh, for curing certain problems and ailments in the body. Uh, traditionally, it's been used for, for many, many um, ailments. So I, I think you'll enjoy them. The movements are not difficult. We'll go over them easily, and then we'll play with them later. Okay? The five animals are, the first is that we'll look at is the bear, then the tiger, then uh, the deer, the monkey, and finally the stork or crane. Each one of these animals has its own feeling, has its own uh, sort of symbolic representation. You know, it's like when you think about a bear, a bear is big and strong and rooted, a very powerful uh, kind of creature. And so the movements that come from the bear lend themselves to this. It's very good for the lower body, it's very good for rooting, it's very good particularly for the um, sort of a waist and the organs that are right uh, in the lower abdomen. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about them as we go along. And so we'll start first by, let's take just a moment to um, organize ourselves. So if you just stand comfortably you want to feel your feet on the ground. The body wants to remain erect. Top of the head is lifting. All of these uh, are breathing in and out through the nose. In and out through the nose, unless uh, otherwise specified. Now, Let's take one moment here to, this is something I think is, is important and it's a very nice thing to do when you're standing and relaxing. As you inhale through your nose, the breath is going to be centered in the belly, of course, like all Qigong exercises. We're gonna be breathing into the lower Dantian. But as we breathe in, we want to say to ourselves internally, quiet. And as we exhale, we want to say to ourselves, relax. So, as you're standing or sitting, as you inhale, say quiet inside. And as you exhale, say to yourself, 
relax. Now it's a very good thing to be doing when you're in your car, when you're just sitting. Yeah, as you're breathing, inhale quiet, exhale relax. We don't want tension to be building up in the body. All right, so quiet and relax. Now we're going to, be in between each movement, we'll do what we call shogong, or gather the energy to the lower belly. So here's where, the way we're going to do it. Having some part of your mind in your belly, we're going to inhale, gathering all the energy that's around us, all the energy that comes down from the universe, and open up the Bai Hui point top of the head and allow this energy to just ooze itself down through the body. So all this energy, we're consciously directing it downward allowing it, opening the body so that it streams down. Now, when it gets to the floor of the pelvis, then it, inhale and feel this expand in the belly. I kind of make like a little round feeling here to expand in the whole belly. I feel this fullness in my belly as I inhale. Then as I exhale, it settles in the belly and then anything that I don't need or want, heavy anything, drops right down through the legs. Hmm? Let's try that again. Inhale, gather the energy. Concentrate the energy top of the head, open up and allow this energy to permeate through the core of your body. Feel it drop down. Just sort of like a warm rain. It drops down to the lower belly. Then inhale, allow this to expand all around inside the abdomen. When you feel this nice fullness, relax and let the sort of things you don't want settle down and down the legs and out. So that's what uh, we call shokung, all right? So let's start with the bear. Now, <clears throat> we're going to use a little bit wider, I would say, than shoulder width, approximately shoulder width stance for this. The feet are basically going to face straight ahead. Now, the basic movement of this is as I shift the weight to the right foot, the right side drops down slightly. Then as I shift the weight to the left foot, the right side pulls back and the left side drops down slightly. So there's the hips, the weight is moving side to side like so. Now you want to feel the weight in the center of the foot. Don't allow it to go, don't go outside, go to the inside of the foot. Okay, so as you're shifting side to side like this, as the weight goes to the right, the right hand drops slightly down. As the weight goes to the left, the left hand side goes slightly down. Okay. Now, you want to feel the weight shifting, the foot getting slightly heavier. You want to, it, it, with the bear, you, you, you don't need to be really strongly erect, but you want to be integratedly standing up. Sometimes we see people doing the bear, and later well, when we do uh, some exercises, we, we're going to bend over a little bit, but right now, stay fairly straight. Now, you're going to notice that the hand that's dropped in, as it comes back, it's going to pull slightly up. And this one's going to drop slightly down. Now, the thing to be careful of is the knees. There's a tendency, as you go onto the foot, to let the knee on that side collapse in. Do not let that happen. Keep the knees 
going in the direction of the toes. Yeah? So take the time when you're practicing this to look at yourself, make sure that these knees are going in the direction of the toes, okay? Now, this can be quite relaxing. And if you can, picture in your mind a big, powerful bear. Huh? As it's just moving, lumbering through the woods. So this is the basic bear movement. Very good for the lower body. Okay? Very good for developing the strength of the lower body. Good for the waist. You can see the waist is turning. Good for relaxing in the shoulders. Now, any of these exercises can be done as long as you feel like it. If you uh, are in poor health, maybe just a few times to start with. If you are more uh, looking for uh, sort of something a little more, you can do it aerobically. But I would say generally, a nice, easy, relaxing movement. Breathing in and out through the nose. Good. And coming, after each exercise, come to a basically a shoulder-width stance. Stand upright. Feel your body. Feel what you've done inside. I can, can feel a lot of expansion sort of up in my uh, upper body from that shoulder movement. My legs feel uh, solid. Then we do Shokong. If we were outside, we would gaze way into the heavens. Allow the energy to drop down through. When it gets to the lower belly, Feel it expand throughout the entire intestinal cavity and then let it sink and relax. All right, the next uh, exercise that we're going to work with is the tiger. And the tiger is a very powerful creature. It uses one bat of its claws or its arm. I mean, that would be it. You know, a tiger can hit the back of an elephant and probably kill it. Tiger is very, very powerful in the arm. So, so this exercise, very powerful for the upper body, particularly developing power. So let's start at the basic, putting the feet together, toes slightly outward. And what we're going to use is what we call the empty stance. So our feet are slightly out, and just look, let's just look at the step. We're going to put the toe and just touch down the toe lightly, facing a little bit to the side, and bring it back. We're then going to shift the weight onto this foot, step out the toe to the other side, and come back. So the weight is going to alternate from foot to foot with a slight sideways angle, all right? Like so, and like so, all right. Now the hands, 
In Tai Chi, we have a hand position that, like this. And this particular opening here is what's called the tiger's mouth. It's quite open. It's almost like an L here. And what it's used, this hand is used for grabbing, for striking, for pushing, but also part of it energetically is that this point right in the juncture of the uh, index finger and the thumb is a, a very important point in the large intestine uh, meridian. And the large intestine contains the dantian. A lot of our internal strength and power comes from the small, large intestinal area, the, the, the pelvic area. So by having this hand open like so, it stimulates that meridian and adds to this exercise. Okay, so if you keep that in mind, we'll start off the most easy. Now I'm dropping my weight into my right leg, touching down the right toe. As I drop down, the hand comes up, the hands come up to about the center of the chest. Then the hands stretch out about face level, a little bit lower than face level, with this sort of configuration with a f slight feeling of stretching in this tiger's mouth area. Then it relaxes as we come back. As we go to step out, the hand comes up to the other side, the hands come up to the center, and we stretch out. And relax. Coming back. So, oh. so you want to gaze sort of like through your hands here. And back. This is the sort of relaxing version. The easy, relaxing version. Huh? Okay, now the tiger, we want to work a little bit more on strengthening this, the tendons and the uh, structure of the upper body. So when the hand comes out, now what we're going to do is we're going to extend our claws, taking each joint, one joint, two joints, three, and close and squeeze and then the hands are going to relax and come down. So the hands on this one are going to come up, relax. They're going to stretch out. Now I've got my tigers, just so kind of the relaxing hand. And then increase, it's sort of like you're gonna use your claws, squeeze down, and then relax as you come in. So that's the hand movement, and we'll put this together with our body movement. Okay, so we inhale. Exhale. Come back down. Change. Hands come up, out, claw, and relax as you come back. Change. Up, out, so bring the spirit of the tiger, the strength, 
Really feel that tiger energy come out. The tiger is really the king of beasts and there's nothing I don't think as strong as a tiger. Maybe an ant in proportion. But. A lot of times they say, take a fierce gaze so that you bring up that sort of strength and power. It's important that, okay, now here I'm feeling from my center very, very strong squeeze. Very, all the tendons and everything are working. And then everything relaxes back to the center. You know, if you create tension, the whole body seems to be tense. And then as you release it, all this energy and chi flows back to the dantian, which is a very good thing to, to, to be doing for the body. It's sort of like it creates a pumping sensation for energy. Once again. Relax. Here. Bring the chi up and out. Let the chi flow back to the center. Bring the chi up and out. Let the chi flow back to the center. A couple more times. All right. So relaxing. Really open. You're going to feel a lot of. Uh, energy in the arms and hands, just let it relax. Particularly pay attention to your lower belly. Good. Take an integration breath. Shokong. Feel the energy flow down through the body. To the lower belly. When it arrives, fill it up. And relax. The next uh, exercise, the next of this, is the deer. Now the deer is a very graceful and quiet and beautiful creature to watch, particularly if it's not in your garden. Here uh, we're in Port Townsend where I live, deer have overpopulated and we have to fence them out of the garden. But when they're in somebody else's garden, I love to see them moving around, you know. But uh, anyway, they're, they're beautiful creatures, very gentle, very gentle-like. But they have incredible power in the legs and the waist. You can see them, they can just stand and jump right over an eight-foot uh, fence. It's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, this exercise is very good for developing the whole spinal connectedness, a sort of a gentle, thorough spinal connectedness, and a lot of work in the hip area. So, the body, how we are going to do this. We're going to do it like we've been doing it, stepping forward with the empty step with one foot, and the empty step with the other. The hands for the deer are going to be placed in front of the body. They're not 
one hand is going to be at about the elbow level of the other. The fingers are basically facing the same direction. They're not facing in odd directions. They're basically facing in the same direction. The longer top hand is about at the shoulder level. The other hand is about at the level of your elbow in the center of the body. So first we're going to do one side with this hand and then we're going to do one side doing the opposite kind of motion. Now, uh, as, so this, the, the body's movement, we're going to be creating, we're going to be sitting on one leg or the other. And we're going to be moving, it's more or less like I'm circling the spine. And we're thinking about the top pole and the bottom pole, the cossacks and the top of the head. And this circle can be at any size. We want to start out fairly small and then the circle is going to get bigger and bigger. Now, what you want to be feeling here is straight spine. We don't want to let the spine collapse. It's a straight spine without tension. There's a feeling of length of the spine, of length of the spine. Now you're going to find this to be, in the beginning, probably fairly challenging on the leg you're sitting on. So just do as many as you feel comfortable and then you, you can stop and then do the other side. Okay? So uh, in Tai Chi, we're used to doing this, what we call empty step. So uh, the, it doesn't take too long before you feel comfortable sitting in, with this particular stance. All right. So the foot that goes out, that is the long hand. So if I were to do the right foot, the right hand would be long. And if I were to step out with the left foot, the left hand would be long. Okay, so here's the move. The hands and body are going to move together. We don't want to have tension here, but we do want to keep everything moving together. Now, our intention, our feeling is a very graceful, a very light, a very sort of quiet, orderly kind of movement. So here I'm doing a clockwise, for me, a clockwise movement. So at the top I'm basically straight up and then now I'm bending, you know, about a 45 degree angle. Now just let your breath be relaxed as you do this. Of course you're breathing into the lower belly, but please don't try to match the breath with any particular part of this movement. So I do approximately 10 in one direction, and then go in the other direction. The head and torso and body, everything is moving together. Okay. We're massaging all the internal organs. This is very good work for the back, very good work for the hips, leg. Having this side is uh, beneficial to the stomach spleen. Good, and coming back. Now you might want to just relax for a moment, kind of let yourself, um, let the muscles just sort of relax for a moment. Then we're gonna step out with the other side, I'm stepping out with my right hand. Right hand is longer, and once again, this time I'm going to continue starting with a 
clockwise circle. Now all of these exercises were designed and do gain the most benefit from being done outside. This is very nice. You can do it undercover outside. It doesn't take any room to speak of. But you do want that nice fresh air. If you're at home, please open the window. Try to get some air going. They're easy to learn these movements. You can just learn them and take them outside. And of course you don't have to do all of them. You can just do one sometime or other and do a couple, mix and match. But of course they were designed to do all of them together. Good. And the other direction. Feeling the spirit of the beautiful, graceful deer, the quiet gentleness. Come into a relaxed, centered position. Take a moment to experience what, you're, what you've accomplished. A lot of energy in the uh, upper body from holding the arms like that. Also, I can really feel my, uh, particularly my tailbone in, in that area, cossack, sacrum. Good. Gather energy, shokun. Right. Next is the monkey. Now the monkey is a mischievous little creature and um, I, I was telling uh, some people this morning how when I went to Nepal to the uh, temple, the monkey temple there, right in Kathmandu, there's this famous uh, temple called the monkey temple to the god uh, Hanuman, which is one of the uh, gods there. and. Um, these monkeys are like everywhere and all over and they immediately come up and start grabbing anything that you have that's not locked down. They'll grab it and take it. You know, they'll stick their hands in your pockets and grab things. They'll, they'll come up and try and, you know, if you have something colorful, they'll immediately grab it. And monkeys are very fast and very agile. Of course, they can, they tumble, they can jump. They, you know, you can see them coming through the woods and, you know, going from vine to vine and all of that. So the, the energy of the monkey is sort of a mischievous agility, sort of a quick grabbing kind of thing. So uh, the, the, the uh, foot movement, we'll use the same foot movement, kind of coming into our empty stepping, our empty stepping. 
Now the hands going, what the hands is going to do, it's going to come up, relaxed sort of by the, by the waist, then it's going to come out, grab, and pull back. So the hands, so the hands are going to come in opposite. As one hand comes up, one's going to go down. It's going to come out, back, then as this one goes down, this one's going to come up, out, and switch. So this energy, this thrusting out, grabbing energy, comes from the belly. It's like doing the twist. How the arms just are going to follow the pelvis. So this kind of flicking out energy is going to be by doing like a twisting motion. Now, generally you can do a very light fist. You can grab with a very light fist. In Tai Chi, sometimes we grab with, with a pinch, with a sort of a, what we call the hook hand that you can grab something. If it was small, you could grab it like this. If it was bigger, you could grab it like so. But this one is not a, a strong, it's not like the tiger in that it's not a strong energy. It's a very kind of a little quick, quick grabbing kind of energy. So this movement is very good for reflexes, for agility, and, and like so, okay? So, we'll start off slow. This one builds up, can build up to be quite uh, energetic and quite fun and light. Yeah. So, as you step out with a foot, that hand comes up. You then reach and pull. As you change feet, the hands change position. You reach, pull, change feet and hands. Reach, pull change feet and hands. So as you practice this, you get this feeling of throwing the arm out and pulling it back in. This is very good for reflexes. Now this, you really want to relax. You really want to relax the arm as you throw this out and grab. It doesn't work if you're too tight and controlled. Think about a monkey. <clears throat> Grabbing at something as it comes by. We like these.
That one's very, very invigorating. Shogun. Good, and lastly, we have the very beautiful stork. The stork is uh, stately, um, and it has incredible balance, doesn't it? That it can stand for hours on one leg and just be there. It's also quite powerful. The wings are quite powerful uh, as, as weapons, and, um, but it's very beautiful, graceful kind of creatures and when they fly you know there's this wonderful quality so th this movement is uh, uh, interesting and we're going to also work the entire spine here so here's how we're going to do it starting staying with our feet fairly close together we step out into empty step. As we step out, the hands open, stretching out, kind of like in a V shape. Then shift your weight onto that foot, bring the other foot close up, and as you exhale, you're going to fold. And you're going to squat down I can't talk when I'm down there, my microphone gets caught off, but as we come as we come down, we're just going to fold. The hands are now if, if you have any problems uh, you know squatting, this is fine. Whatever level this is fine, this kind of a feeling. Or, the idea is that the energy is all going to return to the center. Now, if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable when you're doing this, You can give a little bit of a squeeze at the end. And this is going to really, you know, people who have low back problems, very, very good. And it takes a while, but as you keep on this, we get a lot, lot more of spinal flexibility and also improving uh, really just about everything in the body. Very, very, very wonderful and lovely movement. So, and then we're going to alternate between sides. Okay, so. Say, step out with my left toe, inhale, shift the weight forward, exhale. Inhale, step the weight, touch down with the right foot, bring the foot up. This time I'll step back with the left foot. Now you could just continue doing this until you've felt
just sort of lightly fatigued is fine. Now another way that I like to do this one particularly is very similar. Only I'm going to stand in the same place and I'm going to balance on one leg. So instead of stepping forward with that particular leg, what we're going to do is as you inhale, come up on the toe and then gently lift that foot up. Place it right down and close. As you come up, come up on your toe, then lift your foot up. Place the foot down and close. Now, you can, you can just come up on your toe and down. Just up on your toe and down. Up on the toe, up with the foot and down. Okay, take a moment to feel. That uh, definitely heated up my whole system. A lot of uh, heart, lungs, very good for the lungs and heart. Good, and shokun. Okay, so let's look at um, let's look at a couple of sort of variations on the basic movements. All right, uh, things that I particularly like. So with the bear. So if you remember, the bear had this shifting kind of quality to it. Like so, and there's sort of a pulling up kind of feeling. It's like you're kind of, you know, reaching into the blueberry bushes and raking up a little bit of something like that. And the weight shifts, shifts in. Okay, so let's sort of expand on this, make this a little bit more challenging, a little bit bigger movement. Okay, for this we're going to take a fairly large stance to the side. So we're going to take a nice step, and in Tai Chi we call this bow and sit stance. Fairly wide, okay? Now, the movement is going to be, the bear is going to, he's sort of over. He's going to come stretching around up to by where the foot is, and then he's going to roll up and kind of claw up. So, stretch forward and roll the spine up. That, okay? 
then we're going to change feet. Now, changing, we're going to change feet in between each movement. So we're going to, not only are we going to develop all this power and strength of the lower body and waist, but we're also going to work on our balance. So this time, you come and you're kind of stretching forward. Back, back is fairly straight at this point, and then you roll up. Gives a nice spinal exercise. So we're going to stretch out and then roll up. Okay, so now let's start to change. So bring the foot back, step out, reach forward, and rear up. Come back, step out, reach forward and rear up. That's one of the ways that the bears really, you like when they're really challenging, they stand up on their back foot as high as they can, right? They rear up right? and relax down. Step out, reach around. Okay. So here, we're working on a lot of this sort of a bear-like strength, solidness, rootedness, power. Huh? It's so good for the spine because A, we're stretching it, we're stretching it, we're developing nice muscles of the back, then we're rolling up and lengthening the spine and relaxing. Good. That one you can do quite a lot. It's, it's very much fun and very invigorating, very powerful. Shokun. This Shogun piece is as important, if not more important, than the actual exercises is gathering the energy, looking inside, feeling, developing a strong sense of control of inner energy, inner life. Feel the energy expand throughout the whole abdomen. Okay? Strengthening the dantian, strengthening all the internal organs, and then just relaxing and letting tension go. Right. Now let's do a variation on the tiger. Now this is a this is a very great one for spinal strength. Right. We're going to use this same forward movement. When I have my weight on my left foot. I'm stepping in with my left foot. What I'm going to do is reach around behind me and up and grab and then pull the energy back to the center. So we're going to step ahead with the, say now I'm stepping ahead with the right foot. I'm circling up. The bottom hand is reaching back to grab. The top hand is reaching to grab. We do the tiger claw and pull the energy back to the center. Changing feet. Step ahead. I'm stepping ahead with the left foot. As I shift forward, twisting, looking up, grabbing, and pull to the center and relax. 
change feet. You can well visualize how beneficial this is to the spine. To the tendons, ligaments. This is an incredible massage for the internal organs, particularly the kidneys. When you relax, just feel that, just let go and relax and feel that energy just whoosh through the whole body. Shogun. Just see all this sea of energy around you. All of it, just invite it in. Yeah, we're such a part of all this energy and we can focus it like a, like a magnifying glass. Focus this energy in the body. Even though it's all around us, we're part of it, we are it, we can still focus a little bit more by using our mind. Feel this energy. Come to the lower belly. Fill up the lower dantian. Expand. Cre Building up our resources, building up our chi, and then just relaxing. Feel that chi throughout the whole body. Okay, so please uh, go out and practice. Learn these movements. Go outside and practice, and you'll find soon you'll be able to create your own movements. Just think about, think about the animal and let that spirit come out of you, right? And have fun, right? So, thanks again. <laughs>